spiritual gym i thought i'd share my location with you a bit of a different video this week but we are week three into the body transformation i hope you are all smashing it for those of you that are communicating with me you know that i am, well hopefully you can see the difference i've put on three kilograms let's go <laughs> unfortunately though, i'm pushing myself so hard in the gym my sleep is suffering uh, but let me share with you before I share some uh, share some valuable tips for this week's uh, body transformation continuation. Let me share why I'm here, and that's because I keep showing up. I'm actually a guest of this villa. It's a two-story villa in one of the most expensive areas on the island of Phuket. Even probably, not, if not one of the most, the most. Uh, it's called Lion slash Kamala slash Bang Tao. It's absolutely stunning. Let me just show you that. And I'm here for free. Actually, I'm not here for free. I've been paid to come here. One of my, I can't really say clients because like a lot of my clients, he's a really close friend of mine, but he's coming to Thailand with some of his friends, having sat in a meditation ceremony with me before, uh, he wanted to experience again he's done it twice before so he's actually bringing his partner her sister and two of their friends to come and sit with me and uh, and this is where we'll be hosting the meditation ceremony this weekend and i'm so grateful you know some of you know that the last year two years have been i would say almost the toughest year yes no not really two years the last six months have been, in terms of a six month period, it's been the most, it's the toughest six months of my entire life. But I keep showing up, I keep showing up. I don't wither away and I don't, you know, retreat into a little corner and hope that the universe will save me. You know, I don't even speak to that which I don't want. Unless it's to communicate with someone in a conversation about the challenge or the circumstance or the situation in my life. I never speak to what I don't want. I don't regurgitate it over and over again. And it's one of the things I want to share with you. So I'm so grateful. Like, you know, this is not, if you think this is showing off, I don't care because I know what it is. And if you know me closely, you know that I'm grateful to be here. Oops, my alarm's going off on my other phone and I'm so grateful and I just want to share that gratitude with you I've been listening to music actually it's quite funny so not only did I am I here for the weekend for free in this mansion villa I have my own suite never mind room I have my own suite in the villa what have you I'm gonna film so much content when I'm here I'm also being paid to be here not much these ceremonies are I want to say one a new part of my business and work that I do but also I kind of like just doing it for a fair value exchange I'm not even sure I want to market it you know I'll just stick to the coaching and the speaking but I'm being paid to be here and for that reason I'm so grateful especially when this has been the six months that it's been to sit here and just soak up the energy listen to music I've started drumming on a djembe drum, an African drum, and I've just been boom, 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 drumming and meditating and stretching. And it makes me think of my book, Spiritual Fitness. In Spiritual Fitness, I share the 12, uh, 12 pillars of spiritual fitness. And the first four pillars are under mental fitness. Number one, and this is really, this is where we're going into the body transformation challenge. This is very powerful. And this is what I've been doing. Even when I'm not thinking about doing it, I'm still doing it. And then on reflection, I realize what I'm doing. To master your mind, to master your thoughts. Number one, you've got to hold yourself responsible for everything. For everything that is and everything that isn't. For everything that was, for everything that could have been. Just hold yourself responsible for everything your health, your fitness, your bank account, your relationship or not relationship, the relationship you have with your children, the state of your business, everything. 
and all the good stuff too. Hold yourself responsible for your six pack, for your, you know, your, your trim body, for your incredible fitness, for the places that you get to work at, for where you live, for your village, your town, your community. Hold yourself responsible for everything. Here's why. Because like when I had that collision, when I was hit by a car, the second that I chose to blame my circumstance, I'd get rid of my power. I would lose my power. But the second you say, or the moment that you make a decision and you say, everything is my fault. Everything is my fault. I know it sounds extreme, but make everything your fault. Now you have the power to change it. It's just so stunning. I have another friend here in Thailand right now. And she's just so in love with Thailand. I mean, she's actually quite close to here. I'm going to see her after these three days here. Just the energy here is something else. And I hold myself responsible for being here. For being here in the ugly, for being here in the bad, for being here in the challenging, and for being here in the good and the grateful and the great and hold yourself responsible for everything. And then you have, not only do you have the power to change it, but you own everything in your life. You take ownership of everything. And when you take ownership of everything, you're an owner. You're the CEO of your life. That's number one in mental mastery. Take responsibility for everything. Wake up today and say, everything is my fault. And if I don't like it, time to change it. Number two, team or people. Who do you have around you? Right, the person that I'm here with, he's a very close friend of mine. But you know how he became a very close friend of mine? And he's been a client of mine for multiple years. He's put me into his business. He's helped me get into other businesses. I've done talks for him and his company and other companies. He's connected me to private clients. He's brought people to my retreats. How we did, got to all of that was he just signed up to do coaching with me. I can't even remember. Eight years ago, maybe. And now he's flying here and we're like, can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you. Someone else messaged me, my other client slash friend that's here. said, you must be so excited to see you. I said, I cannot wait. I miss him. It's only been about six months since I've seen him. But he's one of the magical people that I have in my life. Magical. Like, I've seen him laugh. I've seen him cry. I've seen him celebrate. I've seen him going through trials. And he remains the same. An absolute beautiful human being. And then this person that I'm going to see next. I've only known this person for eight, wow, eight, nine months? No. Ten months maybe. Eleven months. And I adore her. I love her. I tell her I love her. She's brilliant at business. She's so spiritual. She challenges me. She tells me the truth. She's cocky. She's sarcastic. And she helps, she helps me on things that I'm not good at in business. And I support her in the ways that I know to support her. And we feed into each other. And it's a fair value exchange like myself and Paul, my other friend. And then I have Francisco and Vinny, and I have some of you in this group. You know, when you have these people around you that are like golden nuggets, that are like magic wands, that when you're around these people, you just feel magical or magic shit happens, you go a lot further in life. You can go a lot deeper within yourself. And together, you can elevate a lot higher in life as one of my mentors said, and he's also one of those people in my life. It brings me so much joy, coincidentally. I sent him a message today and I said, we must catch up, Mr. Andrew Priestley. He always says, if you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. It's so true. Who do you have around you? When I had that collision, I woke up and I said, who do I need to surround myself with? And I saw David Goggins was speaking at an event in London. I was not out of hospital even a few days I was high on morphine, I was on crutches, I couldn't walk, but I managed to get myself put into a car with a seat lied, uh, laying down or lay down, and I was driven by my sister-in-law at the time to London, two and a half hours away, 
put into a wheelchair to get to the stage and then I was gifted an opportunity to see him off the stage the legend himself David Goggins and I got to spend time with him and I got to have a one-to-one -one conversation with him why because I kept fucking showing up and I kept doing my best and I kept holding myself responsible and also the right people the owner of this event uh, Nick he gifted me this experience so what am I saying here? Just just get the right people around you. And, you know, don't be shy. Like, pick up the phone. Message people on social media. Go to networking events. There is an incredible networking event in Bangkok that I want to get to, to for your benefit, for all of my clients, my students, for myself. It's called Heal, as in Heal Yourself. It's got uh, Stephen Bartlett. It's in Bangkok. He's coming all the way to Asia. It's got lots of other amazing speakers, and they're speaking about trauma, compassion, compassionate leadership, all the things that I love so, so much. And I really want to get to this event in October. Why? So I can add more people to my magic circle. So who's in your team? Right, that's number two. Number three, just to be clear, number one is hold yourself responsible. Number two is get your team around you, whether that's friends, coaches, accomplices, peers, whatever. Number three is meaning. There is no set meaning to life. I guarantee you that people have sat at this villa Okay, maybe not guarantee, but I wouldn't be surprised because there's just one villa, right? But definitely it's happened at a villa. I would guarantee that at some villa like this, that someone has sat here and contemplated taking their life or contemplated or thought about what's the meaning of life. And then other people have sat here and they can't sit still because they're like, oh my God, this is the greatest day of my life. And the same goes for not being at the top of a mountain, but for being at the bottom of the mountain. Maybe in a tin shack. Maybe living on the streets. Maybe living on the streets, someone is going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Whereas someone else living on the streets is getting a meal and saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, thank you for the meal. You can get someone doing a 5K race, a 10K race, a half Ironman, an Ironman triathlon, and one person finishes last and the other person finishes second or even first. And the person that finishes last going, fuck yes, I'm an Ironman. And the person that finishes first goes, oh, now what? Now I've achieved this goal, what else do I do? Oh, now I've got no purpose. Anyway, Example, 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 example. Uh, I can just keep creating more examples of this, but the point is, there is no meaning to life. We create our life's meaning. And number four, how we do that, the first one is awareness, right? So that's meaning. Understand that there is no meaning. You can look at the sunset without even looking at it. You can be wrapped up in your phone and worried about life. And also, another version of you could be sitting here and saying, there's no way I can look at my phone right now because look how beautiful that is. And put your phone away. We're always creating the meaning of our life. You can say that pool is cold. I can keep going on. You can say that pool is cold but if you go to Antarctica, suddenly that pool isn't so cold anymore. <laughs> Perception, perspective. <laughs> Perception and perspective. So, number four is focus. Now, it's a lot of awareness I've given you. The fourth pillar of mental mastery is focus. Where are you putting your focus? Where are you putting your focus on where you've been? Or are you putting your focus on where you're going next? I spoke to a new client recently and look, this is part of my coaching style. I just say it like it is, but I do it from a place of deep love because I care. I give a shit. I'm not a textbook coach. I coach because I want fucking people to experience the best of life. Just like before that, I want to give myself the best experience of life and of living. 
But this person was just pouring into me, pouring into me, pouring into me. And I won't go into the details and I won't share exactly what I shared. But basically I said, all you keep telling me is what you fucking don't want. All you keep regurgitating is what is going wrong. All you keep repeating is everything that you don't want. I said, if you take one thing away from me helping you so far, it's this. Whatever you focus on, you'll get more of. And I basically said, I'm not willing to entertain this language anymore. Hello? Hello? Sorry. Hello? What the fuck? Oi, hello? Who's that? Sorry, someone just come in the villa. You come in now? Okay, come. Oh, okay. I thought someone came in the villa. Kotor, pick up. Somebody come, Fundy up. She just came to feed the cat. Apparently, there's a cat here. So I just basically told this person I'm not willing to entertain this language. Because it doesn't matter what strategy I give you. If you keep talking like this, we ain't fucking getting anywhere. So this is some good coaching golden nuggets for life. But for the body transformation for the next 10 weeks, 10 weeks or nine weeks, 10 weeks, I think. Yeah, because this is the third video, but I did the second one after the first week. So for the body transformation challenge and for you just basically staying in the best physical, mental and spiritual shape in your life. Number one, hold yourself responsible for everything. Number two, get around the right people, even if you have to pay for it, because your life depends on it. Number three, make sure that you are creating powerful meanings for everything that you're going through. When you feel broken, say i am rebuilding when you feel in chaos tell yourself that you are collecting you are pulling together the new version of you when you are oops, when you are going through a breakup tell yourself you're having a breakthrough and you're breaking through from the old into the new and number four focus on what you want to finish with a quote from Einstein, some of you have heard me say it a lot before. Everything in the world is energy and energy is everything. Here's the quote. Right? If everything is energy, right, then you can't have two different energies together, right? like love and hate. They're different energies. They can't be in the same place. You can have them close to each other, but you can't have them in the same place. So if you want to have a certain energy life, you have to be that energy. If you want to bring in a certain energy, you have to be that energy. And here's the quote from Albert Einstein. He said, you must, no, sorry. When you match the frequency of the reality that you want, you cannot help but get it. This is not philosophy. This is physics. It's the science. It's the science. I'm not an idiot. Even in my challenges, even during my trials, even when I'm figuring life out, it's moments like this that I say, thank you, God, thank you, universe, thank you, me, because I attracted this. It couldn't have been any other way. I attracted you, my client, my student. Whether you are a student in spiritual gym or a client that you've worked with me privately, that's how I... I say it, clients are private coaching, students are in my communities. I attracted you. It couldn't have been any other way. So, focus on your goals for your body transformation. Tell yourself what this means and create a powerful meaning. When you have a shitty day and you have what I call just one of those days, 
start again tomorrow and say, what did yesterday mean in a positive way? Get the right people around you and leverage spiritual gym community, right? We already have a kick-ass community, right? We use the school app or school software, school.com. I know some other people that have school communities. I know some people that have jumped into other school communities. And two or three of them have said to me, JP, it's great, but it's not like yours. The energy in your school community is amazing. The energy in spiritual gym. So connect with each other and fuel each other. You know, make sure that you're motivating and inspiring each other by connecting with each other. I love connecting with you. If you're a private client of mine, you know I love my sessions with you because it gives me fire. It gives me inspiration to see other people going after their goals. You know, Marianne Williamson said in her poem, Return to Love, when you liberate yourself, you give other people permission to do the same. Well, the same goes for when you get fit, you give other people permission to do the same. When you, when you inspire yourself, you give other people permission to do the same. When you pick yourself up and keep going, you give other people permission to do the same. The list goes on and on and on and on. Anyway, peace and love. I hope you found this valuable. Stay in the work, stay strong, keep moving, and never 